Hello, and welcome to my video to summarise the content of inclusive curriculum, which is part of our curriculum design course. So in previous videos, I've discussed analysing the curriculum and looking at models of the curriculum. So looking at four models in particular, where you can get your teeth into and see the pros and cons and then relate it to your curriculum. Threaded throughout your essay and maybe indicated on your scheme of work when you annotate it, it's also got to be something on inclusive curriculum. So if I click on the inclusive curriculum circle, you'll see what I mean here. In there as usual, we've got the workroom, which has got all the content in, the reading room for some extra reading, especially if you're watching this and you're a PG dip, you need to go in there and have a look, and then the key questions. And the key questions for this particular topic are, looking at the curriculum, how does your curriculum respond to the inclusive in agenda? Looking in particular at some topics such as gender, uh, race, multiculturalism, socioeconomic status, disabilities, learning difficulties, and a number of other aspects. So you've really got to sort of be explicit about how your curriculum is inclusive. So you're not just being talking about the mechanics of the curriculum, also then talk about how you're making sure you're not excluding certain parties. So if I drop back out of this and go up to the workroom, so into the book itself with the content in, you'll see that there's a section for each of these different areas. So we've got gender, race, multiculturalism, etc. And there's also a reminder to talk about the hidden curriculum and how that can be inclusive or exclusive, such as clique groups, if they go out and talk about something in the curriculum outside of the classroom where you can't control could that affect people's uh, or could disadvantage them basically if the others are chatting and talking and excluding certain people and I do a lot of work on that when we talk about social media and how to make effective teaching using social media in one of the master's courses so that might be something to look forward to in the future anyway so think about the hidden curriculum before we then start talking about these different specific groups so when thinking about the curriculum and who could be excluded, one of the aspects is looking at gender. So if you have a read of this, think about how boys and girls could be affected differently, men, women, etc. How inclusive or exclusive is the curriculum that you're proposing to deliver? So you need to be really explicit on that. And if you look through some of the examples here, they talk about the GCSEs, for example, where maths and you know girls are outperforming uh, boys in maths for a while and then interventions were put into place and things have changed slightly but there's still certain different gender differences and in our vocational area you've got to think about uh, aspects of the curriculum where it seems to be very male or female um, dominated now you need to think is this uh, an effect of the curriculum is the curriculum being designed in such a way which I mean by that times um, the way it's delivered, the amount of hours it is, is that excluding certain genders? Or could it be that the content itself is designed or being generated for a specific gender, excluding another, gen another gender? So you need to talk about that. In some cases that can be justified, but that really needs to be explained if you think that's why it is. Hopefully, in most cases, the curriculum is not gender specific, and there could be lots of external factors that affect the makeup of the course and and which genders take up the course that's a little bit out of the scope of this that's something to talk about in the last module professional practice but for the moment we need to think about just the content so is it the content model or the way it's delivered that could be uh, excluding certain gender groups so thinking of that as well think about the race and multicultural issues is there any aspects there that could be uh, excluding certain racial types or uh, even culture, the way that the course is designed and run, or the way it's been marketed, or the way, um, you know, the expectation of the group when they come in. Is it being designed in a certain way to exclude or include? So really think about that. And it's, you know, there's a lot of different issues about, especially if you do community teaching, you know, do you, is a group that has been set up um, to run a particular course for say, uh, female Asian parents in the community would that be appropriate for other groups to come into and it may be that it is but they choose not to 
just because of cultural issues, not because of the curriculum content or the curriculum design. And that's fair enough. But if you are excluding them for a specific reason, that really has to be justified and really has to be shown to be um, clearly set out in your rationale because you're, you're stepping on dodgy ground there if you're you're making it so it's uncomfortable for other groups to take part in that curriculum. So you just need to check that. I'm hoping that the curriculum does not do that and it's just the way it's marketed, the way it's designed, the way it's set out for a particular group to meet a particular demand. So it's at a certain time of day in a certain location to pick a particular group. It wouldn't stop anybody else coming in, but they probably choose not to because it, the times don't suit them or the type of um, the delivery method isn't the same delivery method as expected and there's other choices for them. If you're focusing on one group and to the point of excluding others, that's where you're on dodgy ground. You really have to justify that and you know make sure you're very clear and check legislation on that to make sure you're not overstepping anything. So have a read about that and have a look in the further reading to find out more. Socioeconomic status. Well, this is where we start looking at the class system, for want of a better word, or the demographics of where the course is being run, where the college is situated or the course is situated. Is your curriculum excluding certain groups? Is it, I don't know, I'm trying to think of an example, I can't really think of one right now, but if you think about it, is it set up, designed for only those that can afford it to the exclusion of others? Now, is that right? Can you justify that? Is there an example about that? I mean, things in vocational areas I've seen are courses where there's lots of trips that are supposed to be self-financed. If that is part of the curriculum, you shouldn't really charge the students anything extra. But we know with the financial regulations and the financial structure that we're under, college students might have to pay for that trip. If they do, if they can't afford that trip, is it detrimental then to their success on the course, at which point you're excluding them? So think of things like that and think of things about engagement with the wider community and trying to get people to raise their aspirations. Hopefully the curriculum that you design draws in everybody and tries to raise up their expectations, obviously within the constraints of entry requirements. But there's other options for, for lower levels or higher level students. It's not based on the socioeconomic status of the student or doesn't exclude because they can't afford something or that there's an expectation for them to do certain things or be certain places where they just can't get to because they don't have the resources to be able to do that. So have a think about that and have a look through some of the examples on there. And then you've got disabilities and learning difficulties. So we cover this a lot in different modules uh, and it's been raised many times in subject specialist pedagogy and teaching and learning assessment etc. Now I think at a course level, I think at a course design level are you excluding anybody because of their disability or any specific learning needs? Now you need to really think about that, how that's engaged, be explicit about how your curriculum does not exclude these people. And it fits into things like the Disability Discrimination Act and, and the different legislation around that. So have a little read about that and think about the adjustments that could be made to the curriculum to support as the, anybody with any sort of issues. In some cases, you can't make any adjustments. As long as you've shown that you've tried and you've thought about it and there is no possible chance to make an adjustment to accommodate those students you know if you can do that then you've got a reason that your curriculum is as inclusive as it can be but some people can't access it and we talked about that in the group lots of certain particular vocational courses don't lend themselves very well to certain disabilities or certain uh, learning difficulties or specific needs and if that's the case it just has to be justified and very clear and the fact is probably the curriculum itself doesn't exclude those people but the vacation is not the best route for them so they then need to be advised uh, suitably to, to find the best route or to find out a particular avenue to help support them maybe to find a way to get the route that they want to get to and if your college, your training provider can't do that right now and you've made as much adjustments as you can, you do have a justification there, but you must check against the regulations and legislation just to be on the safe side to make sure you've done all that. The other side of things, there's a number of other inclusive inclusion issues to think about. So one of my little uh, soapbox issues is 
is challenge. Gifted and talented, it's titled in this particular bit of work, but it's, you know, have is is the potential to raise aspiration and really push the learners in that curriculum. How are you going to challenge the more able? You know, just because they come in at level two doesn't mean necessarily they're a complete level two learner. They might be able to access and challenge further and harder tasks. And if you don't have that in there, that stretches those students. There's a whole range of issues going to be raised. So it's really important to show that in there that you've included that and you're not just teaching the mass, but you're also challenging the more able and supporting the less able. So get that in there. Age, any issues about age, do you think? Are any age groups excluded? I mean, it could be that you would advise them not to take the course. For example, if it's a 16 to 18 vocational course at college that has a particular group of young people that often take the course, perhaps a more mature learner might feel uncomfortable in that environment. Uh, so maybe you'd advise them otherwise, but the curriculum itself doesn't exclude them. And it could be that, I mean, we, we know about stories about this, actually having someone more mature in the course can help you as a teacher, but that's a different thing. That's about operation. What we're talking about is design. And as long as there's no restriction on age because of the content or the way you're delivering it and the mode you're delivering it, then it's inclusive as you can get. You may advise them otherwise, but you wouldn't stop them necessarily. Uh, LGBT, so don't forget that there, a very keen group uh, of learners. Is there an issue there where it could cause exclusion issues? So there's, there's three or four different aspects you need to think about there. And it's really important that you look at content and see if it is raising stigma issues or it could raise concern or anxiety to that particular group of people because that could exclude them or could it be even uh, stereotypes things like that I'm just trying to think about the comfort level of these learners like you would any learner and try to make sure that you're not raising some issues demonstrating something showing something or designing the curriculum in such a way that excludes that group so there's a number of different specific areas to look at additional readings which would be really useful for you to have a look at and click on because you know it's again thinking about including everybody as best you can within the curriculum it's really key to get some good examples there within your specific subject area topic at the moment extremism now what we mean by this when we come to curriculum design is people's views uh, either in the content of your course or guest speakers or even your own values could that exclude certain groups or could that cause animosity could that raise anxiety and cause issues and therefore exclude people from the course or make them walk off it so you really need to be careful about that about whose views the content you use comes from the background of your guest speakers when they come in you know what are they going to say what's their standpoint and obviously then reflect on your own views I mean you might have certain extreme personal views but you've got to be careful when designing your curriculum and delivering your curriculum especially if you think teacher is a key part of the curriculum think about how that might affect and influence the route that the learners take and therefore potentially exclude certain people or make them feel very uncomfortable in progressing any further so be careful about that and really think about that and there's some examples and ideas and thoughts in there I mean the key thing uh, that that particular university level is the guest speakers because universities like to express different viewpoints they like people to come in and talk about the different uh, aspects of whatever the subject is uh, but there has been lots of case studies of extremist viewpoints fit now I don't mean just religious I mean also extreme political viewpoints I mean extreme um, sort of capitalist viewpoints in certain ways where you're driving viewpoints from a certain point I mean for example I mean my subject being computing would it be good to have Google or Apple come in there could be some extreme viewpoints there being raised at the detriment of other aspects of the curriculum and really affecting it all excluding certain content as well as the learners themselves so there's loads of things to think about about inclusion so you can get all that in your essay and you can also um, get some of that on your part two as well so as you're annotating part two make sure that you put in there some mention of inclusion and it might be that it's not very explicit it's not there as a, as a line but you say well this content is fairly neutral because of this and explain some of the inclusion issues it might have 
or inclusion issues it's avoiding so really get to grips with that and have a look at that okay that's the end of this what we're going to do next is a video coming up shortly with the next part where i do want to mention a bit about the curriculum itself and get you ready for part two